In this video, I'm going to give you a little background information on what a z-score is, how you calculate that z-score, and then how you connect it to a probability. All right, so first of all, we need to understand what a z-score is. All right, so we're going to do this from a picture because I think a picture makes um, it more understandable here. We've got a bell-shaped curve. All right, on a bell-shaped curve, you will have the mean that is smack dab in the center. Okay, so let's put our mean on here. Okay, now we're going to be referring to, let's just call it an observation. An observation is going to occur somewhere along this curve. Okay, so let's say we have an observation that occurs right there. So I'm going to label that observation. All right, now, the whole idea of a z-score is a z-score measures the distance between the mean and your observation. All right, so um, that is what a z-score is, and it's measured in standard deviations. Okay, so actually, let's write that out here. Z-scores measure the distance between the mean and an observation. And then let's also put um, on here um, z-scores are measured <coughs> in standard deviations. Okay, so <clears throat> keeping that as my definition here, then I could label my diagram up here as saying anything to the right here would be my positive z-scores. Anything to the left here would be my negative z-scores. All right, and right there at the mean, I have a z-score that is zero. All right, so z score equals zero right here at the mean. All right, so I've got positive z-scores over here. I have negative z-scores to the left of the mean. At the mean, my z-score is always zero. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea of what a z-score is. It's measuring that distance between the mean and an observation, and we measure a z-score in standard deviations. Okay, now let's take a look at the formula. Okay, um, let's do it in words first, and then we'll use symbols. All right, so our z-score is going to be found by taking our observation minus our mean and dividing that by the standard deviation. Okay, now in common mathematical symbols, so z equals x minus the mean over the standard deviation, which is your typical formula that you generally see in your statistics class. All right, now let's take a look at an example of um, calculating a z-score and then finding the probability that goes along with it. Okay, so um, for this example, I've just randomly said, okay, let's say we're given a mean of 15, an observation of 10, and a standard deviation of 5. Okay, now we're going to calculate the z-score. All right, so let's go ahead and switch that over to a different color. All right, so let's use our formula. All right, our formula is z equals our observation minus our mean all over our standard deviation. All right, so for us, this is going to be our observation, which is 10, minus the mean, which is 15, all over the standard deviation, which is 5. Okay, that's going to give us a negative 5 over 5, which is going to give us a z-score of negative 1. All right, now at this point, if I were you, I would probably go back to my bell-shaped curve and draw a picture so that I can visualize and see what's going on. Okay, so let's do us a somewhat of a bell-shaped curve here. All right, now we said in our example here that our mean is 15. So let's put our mean on at 15. 
All right, our observation is 10. All right, so our 10 is going to be you know, just over here, rough estimate here. Our 10 is going to be there. Now, I would also put on our Z scores. Okay, so our Z scores, and let's label them so we know what they are here. Our Z scores, we calculated a Z score of negative 1 at our observation of 10. We know that at the mean, our Z score is always 0. Okay. Now, there's what's going on in my picture right here. Okay, now, what is the probability an observation is less than 10? All right, what's the probability that our observation is less than 10? So what I'm asking for is, I'm wanting for this part B right here, I'm wanting to know what the probability is from right there. All right, less than 10. What's the probability of an observation occurring less than 10? Okay, so now you're going to go to your... Um, your tables, all right, and um, hopefully you can see this, but if not, all right, usually your uh, normal distribution tables um, have some type of picture up here at the top that lets you know what these values in the table represent. All right, this is showing shaded to the left, so this is going to give me the probability of it occurring to the left or less than your observation. All right, I have a z-score of negative 1, which is negative 1.0000, so I'm going to come down my z-score till I get to a negative 1. I'm going to go across the top to correspond to the appropriate decimals, which is 0 .00, and then I'm going to come down, and probably on the video you cannot read this tiny little number. I'm assuming you've got your own table that you're looking at. You've got a 0 .1587, okay, so that value is going to come from your table. Okay, so I said 0.1587. All right, if you wanted to turn that into a probability, you know, as a per, written as a percent, it'd be about 15.87%. All right, so what's the probability, 15.87% that the probability and observation is going to be less than 10? Right there, okay, so 0.1587. All right, now it's just a little bit of arithmetic here. What's the probability an observation is more than 10? Okay, well, more than 10 would then be everything else over here. So this part would be the more than 10. All right, and the whole probability is 100%, all right, or 1. So then all I've got to do is go 1.0000 and subtract this probability that I found from the table. 0.1587. All right, do a little subtraction here. It's going to go to 0, 9, 9, 9, 10. Do a little subtraction here. 3, 1, 4, 8. So 0 0.8413, or if you want to write that as a percent, it would be like 83 or 84.13%. So the probability that an observation is more than 10 is about 84%. So over here, so 0 0.8413. All right, so just a very, very brief introduction of what that z-score is, how you can connect it to your bell-shaped curve, placing everything on there, and then calculating some probabilities using your tables. Definitely thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.